Hey everyone, I'm Magic Pat, the Purple Worm DM, and we're going to talk about how a tiefling sorcerer saved me and my group on today's Wednesday campaign stories. I figured today, since we're talking about tieflings, I'd go ahead and look the part. This used to be a little costume we would wear when we went to Dragon Con, so I figured we'd bring it back out just for the story. So just like our last story, this takes place in the Horde of the Dragon Queen. We are still inside the camp trying to get away, and we have been basically found out by all of the guards thanks to a gnome rogue getting caught inside of a place they shouldn't be. So fast forward a little bit, and we're trying to get some kind of prisoners out of the camp. And at this point, we have split the group. And we've been caught. They were not really caught, but they, they're looking for us. So we're trying to find a way out without causing a big scene and to save some people in the town. Now, if you remember from the last one, my wife is actually playing this campaign with us. And she created an amazing character she calls Remy. She's a golden-skinned tiefling, and she's a sorcerer. And I think she has, like, the bloodline of, like, golden dragons or something. There's a reason why she has the golden scales anyway. Um, she has gone off on her own, and I believe her and one of the other characters, I want to say it was Robert, the paladin, they came across where the enemy was keeping all of the hostages. And they had like two or three guards stationed out front and several inside that are like, you know, torturing or tormenting the uh, people that are caught in there. So they're trying to find a way to safely get these people out and get rid of these guards because on, on top of that that is also the area where we needed to escape from now the rest of the camp was heavily guarded that was the only section that actually had walls that could be torn down or snuck over that wouldn't cause a big scene one of the things you have to remember about this campaign is that it is not really meant for low-level characters. It says it is. It says it goes from like 1 to like 10 or something, but you can be killed easily for a long time in this campaign. It is very underbalanced, I would say, towards your characters. You, you are at risk of dying a lot. So the last thing you want to do is actually get any kind of attention going on especially in a scenario when your group is surrounded by probably 20 to 30 guards that are way outside of our level so she made it over with uh robert i believe and they tried to figure out how they were going to get to the people and so we waited long enough that there was actual like shift change in the guards this is where the absolute insanity began. Some of the funniest gameplay that I've seen and probably luckiest roles that I've ever seen on top of that. So, you know, she plays her character as a really attractive, really, like, go-getter female type and very sneaky. And so she's, like, uber-confident character. So this was, like, perfect. Her charisma score was, like, through the roof. So all of this came into play at this moment. So they had a shift change. The guards left from one area as some went to another area. And they were swapping out. While they were leaving, she caught one of the guards uh, that hadn't left yet. And she tried seducing him. You know, the, and it was hilarious because she was like, Hey, big boy, want to come over here and get some of this? It's not quite like that, but... That's what it looked like. So when she did her roles to try to persuade this guy or whatever you want to call it, uh, she actually she actually scored really high on it. It was freaking amazing, right? So uh, he went for it, and when the DM asked her what she wanted to do with this turn, uh, she said, once he gets close to my character, I'm going to use Shocking Grasp to try to knock him out. Well, if any of y'all are familiar with that spell, you know you have to have, like, touching distance. You have to put your hand on the, the person uh, or whoever you're attacking with it for it to work. So the way she did it was she kind of, like, walked over seductively and, like, wrapped her arm around him like she was going to talk to him 
And once she put her palm to his shoulder, she used shock and grasp. And uh, our DM actually gave her uh, inspiration or advantage, one of the two, because she laid it on his, like, metal armor. So electricity through metal. Uh, actually knocked him out. And she, she stated that she wanted it to be, you know, um, non-lethal damage. So knocked out this guard and was trying to figure out, okay, what do we do now? Well, about the time that they were trying to figure out what to do, one of the other guards was coming back over for the shift change. So, you know, Remy and Robert grabbed that guard, threw him in with all of the uh, refugees that were stuck in there, and Robert hid, and as the guard walked up, was obviously like, who are you? What are you doing here? She did the exact same thing over. She said she wanted to seduce him, tried the whole, hey, big boy, arm wrapped around the guard, shock and grasp, huge damage, stunned him, knocked him out. This went on for like five guards in a row to the point that there was no more coming for shift change. She got the ones coming and going from the area. After she laid up this pile of bodies behind the shed, or, yeah, I think it was like a shed. She piled up all the bodies over there. These unconscious guards with, like, you know, electrical burns. Uh, the rest of the group had to try to get over there. Uh, my character, Nadar, had to do some trickery as well. I think he used, like, minor illusion to make, like, a snake in the middle of that area. So they would all get the attention and try to get the snake out. And I snuck past because he had a really high uh, dexterity, sneak, all that good stuff. So I rolled good enough to get Nadar over there. Once we got the group together, we uh, hid the bodies a little better, which they're still alive. And we started getting uh, all of the refugees loose. And uh, Nadar and Robert broke down the wall quietly behind the shed where the uh, guards were being kept. And that's how we ended up sneaking all of the people out. And we get out before anybody noticed. We actually had to go up on the top of a hill because we had to still like survey the whole area and keep track of everything going in and out. It was wild. Had her character not pulled that off five times in a row, there's no telling what would have happened. Because in the middle of that shift change, the generals and stuff were going around trying to get everybody ready for you know a fight because the gnome rogue had been caught by this point and was trying to escape. And so had you know her character not knocked them out that way, we probably would have lost a few characters because some of those guards, the elite guards, were way outside of our, our range and level. So that was how a tiefling sorcerer saved our group. And to this day, is still one of my favorite adventures inside of a campaign that we had. And uh, we actually had another story involving her character that I will do on another Wednesday that is... Just as amazing, but more sassy. <laughs> so anyway, that is our story for this Wednesday. Check back in whenever we have some more stories coming up. And hopefully I'll have some more content coming out throughout the week. And I will see you back here on another adventure.